So we're all here, we're in the presence of God, and we're just going to prepare ourselves when we say a prayer. God, the quiet in the inside.
that we're on the second Sunday of Trinity, we're all in green, the growing tide in the church, where we all just grow in our relationship with God. We come to be in the presence of God, and we come just as we are. And we come as we begin our worship today, as we always begin, as Adrian starts us with our confession. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate, let us call to mind our weaknesses. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. without thinking of it. Father, forgive us. Save us and us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us.
given our faithfulness to you and to your living world, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you like to sit down? Whilst Kate wants to read our first reading.
He said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at home. Oh. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. I think I've been there 
and just be outrageous because I didn't want to be there. Really. Uh, but nonetheless, he kindly looked after me and nurtured me. And then I found my way into hospital chaplaincy, where I could minister to the sick, to their relatives, to the staff, the dying, and to those who bereaved. And that was my place. That was my place. God guided me into that ministry for which I was shaped. I wasn't ready, I wasn't good enough to be a parish priest, uh, but I was good enough to be a good hospital chaplain. God's mercy in calling me was wiser than my own knowledge of myself. And he took me to the right place to minister. Though I have to say the hospital chapel and other ways in which I've worked has led me into some dark, dark places and hard and difficult places to work as a minister. And that's okay because that's what I was called to do and what I was shaped for. That's what I was created for. God shaped and molded me and put me in that place. Which is wonderful, really. And now looking back after 50 years, I can know that that was such wisdom that I didn't possess. But the point is, though this is my day and I have it here, I feel sorry for my father. He spends about three or four minutes cutting it and then he spends the next ten minutes looking for something to do. He can't, he can't find anything to do up there for five minutes, but he has got to justify with the charges. Anyway, um, sorry, yes. The point is that it isn't just me that is called. We are all called and shared by God to do and to be something. And, and we are all different. Remember, the New Testament talks about we're all parts of one body. The epistles tell us that we're all different bits of one body, each with a job to do, each with a purpose, each with a role, each of us called with abilities and skills and wisdom and knowledge and experience that we can use and put in the service of God. It's just a matter of finding that right way, which is just right for us. And that call is universal. All of us have that opportunity to serve. I can't help this morning but think about Andrew and how what, two, three weeks on, two weeks on. She's in Italy. She's in Italy. I was about to feel sorry. I was, I was about to feel sorry for her. She, she, well, that really is my son. I can't help but think about that action and how after all the years of ministry, she's in a place where for a while she should stop ministry and not be able to do it, which is the way the church does it and what it's like. And actually, I also think about her son, who was ordained deeply six years ago, and is at the other end of ministry at the start. But they were going to be on the 27. And how the generations of ministers, of priests and deacons, unfolds. It has unfolded here in this church. <laughs> For decades, priest after priest have come here and served and spent their time here and moved on, and then us come another. And they do their bit. And that's true for each of us. For each of us is called to minister and serve in our time and then let go of the move. And that place of Walker reminds me, as I say, of the Cascadian generations of 
faithful people serving God, serving God in this community, in this place, of which you and I are all a part. And we must be so thankful that God has given us a place, shaped us in a certain way, and given us a chance to serve Him for a while. Like to stand for the affirm our faith. Let us declare our faith in the living God. We believe in the Lord.
to gain today we give particular thanks for Count Adrian as he marks 50 years since being ordained as a deacon. We are so pleased he's here with us now as part of the team of St. Elizabeth and hope that this will be a long and happy association. We ask for a blessing on Alison too as she continues to keep everything functioning in the three churches. Give her strength, guidance and wisdom, Lord, as well as rest. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we bring to you all those in need of your healing at this time and who have asked for our prayers. Mark Richardson, Joe Cancer, Marion Sarah Steve, Wendy Swire, Mavis Cheshire, Barry Shane, Jeff Williams, Dorothy Jessup, Frank Stanton, Sheena Rothman, Rebecca Hughes, Claire Newell, Janice Neal, Lizzie Spear, Anne Gill, Colin Thompson, Sandy Spurgeon, Bill Slater, Edith Cowell, Vicky Rose, and Darren Hanley. In a moment of silence, we bring to you our own prayers. We remember those who have recently departed this life and are now with you in glory, giving thanks for their lives. Remembering Doreen Ruth and Marjorie Cassidy. We remember all the also those whose anniversary falls this week. Edna Winsley Pulford, Alan Kim Kimora, Dorothy Moss, George Gould, Cynthia Dawson, Gertrude Brown, Phyllis Young, Dorothy Butterworth, and Vera Morton. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. And Bless the work we do, the words we say, the love we share, and the grace we show on our daily walk through this beautiful and precious world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your soul, our Saviour Jesus Christ.
will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed, God, God. Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you.
Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it.
make this pledge to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
frente da casa. Não tem falta. Me dá aqui para o fim de Deus. Where 
I will become the vicar of St. Peter. So that is my news. So I have now announced it. At the moment, my licensing date is in October at some point, but it hasn't been confirmed. So that just fits in with everything that you said. You go to where you're called to be. So apart from that, is there any other notices? And we'll do the birthdays in a minute. Thank you. The birthdays, the birthday person would like Andy and Steve's recording of happy birthday today. So, Belle Cotton, it's your birthday tomorrow and you are 81. Is there anybody else who has got a birthday this week? And Belle specifically asked if she could have Andy and Steve's sushi chips. So, can we have happy birthday please?
heart which passes all understanding. Keep your heart. 